Well, hello, tennis fans, and welcome back to my coaching corner right here at the BMP Paribas WTA Finals Singapore presented by SC Global. We're giving you an inside look all week long to the finalists right here in Singapore, and we're very lucky to be joined by an esteemed guest, Mr. Pat Cash. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, He's... Is it my coaching corner or is it your coaching corner? It's yours you today. It, you said it was my coaching corner. <laughs> it belongs to you and we're going to get your insight. So what we're doing here with a former Wimbledon champion is talking all about what's going on on court. Today we have Garbine Muguruza and Johanna Kanta. So Muguruza is already into the draw here in Singapore. Yeah. Kanta, meanwhile. Wow, she's holding her breath. Yeah, yeah she that's is. Right. She's waiting on the final in, in, uh, in, Moscow. in Moscow. Exactly. So yeah. Svetlana Kuznetsova playing tonight in Moscow. Should she win, she gets that eighth spot. Yeah. Joko waits. Now, tell me from a, a coaching perspective, how tough is that as you know, we can start to take a look at these two girls out on court. How tough is it for to prepare for a tournament that you don't even know you're going to play in? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, uh, Joe's a, a, a consummate professional, and I think that's what a lot of people really admire about her. Um, and she's here, uh, she's prepared, She's ready to go, ready to go, and she's uh, she's hitting the ball and preparing as if she's going to be playing yeah, uh, on Monday, and uh, that, that's the way you got to do it. And it's really out of her control. We had a little chat with her just before she walked on mm. the court, and and uh, you know, I asked her, "How do you feel about it? You know, are you, are you nervous?" She said, "Well, I, I got I can, I've got no control over it. I'm not going to bother watching right. that match." In she's Moscow. just got to stay the course. You just got to stay the course, and and uh, you know, this is, it was all new for her. This is right. exciting because she's. Right. She had a fantastic year, and, and of course, to top it off would be to play here. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, she's going about her business, getting used to the court, and, mm -hmm. and in many ways, um, she will be the, you know, probably the tougher player to play because because yeah. uh, Nets are flying all the way across the world, yeah, getting probably one do. practice session. Um, I, I believe they they got to play. One of them's got to play Aga. Is that right? Uh, I believe so as well. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look <laughs> at the actual practice session here. We've got. Garbine Muguruza, which her with her coach, the very well-known Sam Simic, and then you've got Joko, Britain's own Johanna Kanta. Let's talk about Garbine just for a minute. She came here last year, mm -hmm. three wins, got through the round robin. Semi-finalist was stopped by who you just mentioned, Aga Radwanska. She's a player that has so much power. We were just talking about that before. How do you prepare for a tournament when you know you've got so much in your back pocket, but you don't want to say? overstep your bounds? Well, she's an interesting player. I mean, she's had some ups and downs. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons uh, is that she hits the ball very flat. Mm. And players that t typically hit the ball um, very flat with a lot of power uh, can can spray the, spray the ball. You know, these days where the ball just, it just do doesn't come off the racket, there's no f feel on the racket, it comes off very quickly. They don't have the control, and that's what spin is. Spin uh, is basically the control. It, it tends to slow the ball down a little bit. Um, right. Flat the ball is more power. So when she's red hot, like she was uh, in the French Open, and right. boy was she hot. A um, lot of winners, you know, a lot of winners uh, really getting her, her opponent moving all over the court. Um, but when things are not they're so good uh, and you're not full of confidence, those those, those balls can go go everywhere. And sure. we saw the, her warming up, and they came out hitting the ball at the Very back hard. of the court really hard, uh, really heavy. They're heading off a little break now. And but um, 10 minutes of really intense, hard hitting. And you know, just um, watching Gabinia there, she was, she was spraying the ball a little bit on the, on the forehand. Hmm. And um, as opposed to Joe, who has a bit more topspin and has had a lot more control. Right. So as the girls take a break here, talking about Muguruza, three titles in her career. Obviously, you just mentioned the French Open. She's back here for the second year in a row. Let's talk about Joko, Miss Conta. She was outside of the world's top 140 just 18 months yeah. ago, and she's really found that confidence. She started working with Esteban Carril from Spain in late 2014. How, how much can a, a coach really pull out of a player who, Joe has talked about, this has all been a process. Yep. The talent was always there, it's about applying it. It seems as though her coaching team, her setup has really helped that. Yeah, it does. I mean, that's what everybody's looking for. They're looking for the uh, a magic wand, I suppose, and and uh, it works different ways for for different people. But uh, by and large, uh, you know, 
the, the idea is you want to work with a player or you want to work with a coach who's got a bit of a long-term plan. Mm. And, and we often see, uh, we see it whether it's f- football or whatever it happens to be, yeah. and, and a lot on the women's circuit, not so much now, but looking for that instant quick fix. And it doesn't always work that way. Yeah. It tends to be a little bit because you have this honeymoon period where somebody comes in, you get motivated, you get excited, you get some new ideas and, and you play really well for six months. Mm. Um, and then things level out and you know you don't, you, you, it, it tends to, well, you, you tend to start doubting yourself. And yeah. level. But if you have a, if you stick with somebody for a while, you work through the plan. And then I suppose that worked a little bit with Darren Cahill and Simona Hallett too. Um, yes. They've been working for yep. over a year now and, and things uh, were, um, you know, had some ups and downs. But, you know, Darren's a very smart coach and he's got a game plan. And, hmm. and you work through that game plan and become better and better. But, um, you know, in the case of Jo, she's, uh, you know, she's obviously very, very talented, very good athlete, very talented. Uh, and has uh, it had a fantastic year, but it, it is, as you said, it's a process, and, mm. and you've got to consistently work on the, the number one thing, in my opinion. And, and this is, uh, and this for me, this is the most, the most, the most important thing that you can you need to focus on, and that is getting better. How do you get right. better? Right. And how do you get better? Even every at day? the top level of the game. At, absolutely, at the mm. top level of the game. And how do you get better every time you walk on the court? And what is your focus now? You know, I'm 51. I still play some of the Legends <laughs> tournaments. Yeah. Uh, I know I only look 25, but you I do. am 51. You do. <laughs> um, and I still play the Legends tournaments. And I'm telling you, even these, these days, I do not walk on the court without having some focus mm. on how to improve. Now, the coach can help with that. You sit down. You don't want to overanalyze things. A lot of some players really sure. like to analyze things. Uh, Milos Raonic is a classic example. He's very good at analyzing things, and he'll, get, he'll have a plan. He'll go out there. Other people, um, it's uh, you know, quite like their coach to say, okay, you know, let's work on this, and they let the coach take take the lead role there. Yeah. But you need to have a focus every time you walk on the court and about getting better. About getting better, and whatever it happens to be, depends on where the tournament is. Because you have you have certain periods of the year where you have time to, to really sit down mm. and work on on things. Uh, and if you talk to some of the older players. Um, Certainly, Neil Fraser was my Davis Cup captain, a legendary Davis Cup captain for Australia, and won U.S. Open and Wimbledon, and and he always said, he said the older guys were better players than you, the Labors yeah. and all these, because they we had a period of like two months where we could work on our game. Work on stuff. You guys are constant, yeah, constantly shorter. on the circuit, going nonstop one day right. tournament to the next. You don't right. have time to work on the circuit, mm. and, and so it's a real art for the coach to be able to. Uh, work and fix a player's game while they're on the road and, and then and be prepared to hey we've had a bad week or a couple of weeks we've got to take we're going to take one step back or we're going to get two steps forward and, and that's sometimes really tough yeah. when you know your ranking is you're relying on your living well and i think joko has taken uh, plenty of steps forward with yeah. esteban and we've also seen sam simic who our viewers can see here with garby and Muguruza. He has really helped her stay at that level. At this point, we are Saturday evening here in Singapore. The tournament begins tomorrow. Muguruza will take to the court on Monday. Joe might as well. What do you want out of a practice on the eve of a tournament? What are they trying, well, look, to, what are they trying to really hone in on here? First and foremost is getting used to the conditions. Uh, hmm. That's the first thing you do when you, you walk on the court and you hit a few balls and and there's always every every... Every court's slightly different. Um, they, you, at the indoor, t- uh, this time of the year, the, tends, the courts tend to be uh, yeah, reasonably similar. It's just slightly different pace. Um, by and large, the, uh, the girls are saying the court is a little bit quicker this mm-hmm. year than it was last year, mm-hmm. and it's reasonably low bouncing. It's it not is. really getting. You can a, see that here you too. You can see right? that. Yeah, they're hitting, they're hitting a lot of, and uh, not all the girls are that are that tall, but they're hitting, you know, balls sort of uh, waist height. Uh, you know, in between waist and, and shoulder height. Can I ask you, so say a player with Kanta we were talking about, she's got a little more shape to her ball, whereas Muguruza's hitting flat through the court. That Conditions-wise, who does that help? It depends who's hitting the ball in the court. Um, in <laughs> so the, Muguruza. In, in theory, it would be, yes, because she hits the ball hard, she hits the ball flat. Um, but Joe hits the ball pr- pretty well. Um, she's, you know, backhand, is, you can see it's a little... It's a... Um, her arms are quite locked up, quite mm-hmm. quite tight, and uh, there it is. The, yeah, yep. that was a, well. That was a return, so she had to had to move away, 
uh, the, the ball was away from her there. But uh, typically, you need enough room to be able to swing those arms through. Now, if they're locked in, you're not going to get a lot of power. Right. You're not going to get a lot of racket head speed. If they're too far away, you're going to you're going to tend to lose a bit of control. And and we often see juniors and, and, and amateur players like to get close to the ball. They like to have that confidence. They some mm. of us ch choke up on the on the grip and and, and get that com and, and feel comfortable with that. But we end up losing power and and have to muscle the muscle the ball. Um, that's probably something that 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 is something that Joe's had had been working, working on. on. She's 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 very strong. Hits the ball well. And um, can but, I so yeah. then can I ask you about with Muguruza? She's got all the talent in the world. We saw it at the French Open. She beat Serena in a final that was very high quality. But the consistency, how do, you, how do you find consistency in a practice setting? And is that something that her and Sam might work on to try to find on the court? Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's different ways to go about it. I mean, it depends on what her, her goal, goal is. But uh, mm. at this stage, it's trying to get the feel of the ball. Indoor conditions tend to be pretty quick. Obviously, there's no wind. Sure. But uh, the ball will come through the air pretty quickly. Um, in the long term, you'll be, there may be a, a really good cause to... Do you know, do a little bit of what Patrick Moratoglu did with uh, with with Serena, Serena and say, listen, you know, we need to get a bit more air on the ball. We need to cut out. We need to uh, we, we we need to lower the, these these unforced errors. Uh, bigger margin for, for error. Mm -hmm. let's, let's hit a bit more top spin. Let's get a bit more air over the ball. Right. And when you look at Serena playing, well, uh, Carbinia or or uh, Sharapova, which is the classic case. Sharapova hits the ball so close to the net, so low and flat. Mm. And there's a lot, and, and uh, Serena, though, she did for, for quite a few years. She's she changed that. a lot that. more air on Patrick the ball. Patrick has changed so, that, absolutely. So it's a lot more safety. Uh, when they're running hot then and, and uh, slower conditions, this French Open, remember, was really cold. Yes. Really cold. <laughs> I so, do remember, so sadly. Balls, <laughs> yeah, wasn't it freezing? Uh, well, those flat balls that uh, helped Garbinia. that Garbinia was going, she can hit through th mm -hmm. that cold air mm -hmm. with the flat with the flat balls. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, they'll basically be trying to find. Let me ask you. Lastly, as we start to wrap up here, let me ask you about Kanta, and she's not. She's a player that's risen very much this year. That mm. Australian Open semi, first title in Stanford. Does it play to her advantage that these players don't really know her game in and out because she's not yet someone that they've faced week in and week out? That's very true. Uh, you often see that guys bursting on, girls bursting on the scene and racing through the rankings and they have that sophomore blues, as they call it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, sophomore slump, right? Sophomore slump, is that what they call it? Yeah, sophomore slump. Uh, and I don't see that happening with Jo. I mean, she's been around for a little mm. bit, but she's a great competitor, a really good athlete. And uh, she's having the time of her life, and, and she's got a, a good serve. Um, she's got a good forehand, and and she's getting tougher and tougher. So I didn't see that happening to her. I think she'll. And if you watch, see that beautiful forehand there. Mm -hmm. that she gets underneath the ball. And just about every forehand is hit with the same nice bit of topspin. She can add a little bit more on, or flatten it out a little bit. But yeah. there's, there's a great amount of safety. There it is again. Mm -hmm. The wrist comes underneath. Very good technique. Right. Um, you know, she'd probably want to get a little bit more out of her backhand, which I said. Um, but I see her being around. I see her being I, a regular form in the right. top, yeah. top ten. But you never, it's, it's quite tricky. You never right. know with the girls. They lose confidence. It's typically, unlike the men, where they can't serve their way out of trouble, mm. if they have a bit of a she's glitch, had a consistent year though. Uh, you know, we see that happening with Anna Vanovich. We saw mm -hmm. it with Jeannie Bouchard, who, who did great and then lost confidence and, right. and they had to battle their way back into it. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I don't see that with Joe. I think yeah. she'll be around for a, for a long time to come. Very good. Yeah. Well, what a great look we've given once again on my my coaching corner, which has been Pat Cash's coaching <laughs> yeah, corner today. Right. I want to before we go. I want to put you on the hot spot. Who's yeah. your Who's your WTA Finals winner this week? Uh, is Kerber going to finish off the year number I one? I think she's Anna? pretty keen to do that. She'd and like she, to. And she's got the game to, to do it. And But, you know, anybody can win this. I mean, yeah. I think that's what's the really exciting thing. I mean, Joe jo Conta could sneak in and win this title. And, Absolutely. And that's, and, At the 11th hour. And, <laughs> and anybody can win it. And that's, I think, what makes this, this tournament, you know, with Serena in it. Of course, we'd love to see Serena in the tournament. You know, she'd be obviously clear. A, a mm -hmm. favourite, maybe mm -hmm. not a clear favourite with Kerber around, yeah. but but you think, okay, Serena's got power through people. She could, but so was that this, Angie? Was the answer Angie? I think it was. <laughs> I think it was. It could be anybody. I think that's why. Uh, <laughs> thank you, good sir. Hey, everyone. We are going to be back throughout the week with more coaching corners with experts. 
uh, throughout the week here in Singapore. Thank you so much to Pat Cash, oh, and you. we'll see you guys soon.